We're going to create and establish in memory of, of President John F. Kennedy's visit. We're calling it the LULAC Council 60 John F. Kennedy Presidential Scholarship. The, the candidates for this award will have to write an essay writing about the significance, the political and historical significance of President Kennedy's visit here at the Rice Hotel. And also part of the uh, funds will go toward uh, our building fund, which will go toward helping rehabilitate our building there at 3004 Bagby. At this time, I'd like to recognize a couple of other dignitaries who are also with us. We have uh, Council Member Jack Christie. Can you please rise? Thank you. Mr. Judge Helda Tagle. We have Evan Sanchez representing Congressman Sheila Jackson Lee. Congress member, I'm sorry. LULAC State Deputy Director for Youth, Ms. Ana Olivares. And City Council Member District 1 candidate, Robert Gallegos. Thank you. Now I'd like to ask Mr. John Quinone to come aboard. Okay, great. Well, we're about to interview the five folks who are here, five of the people who were here that fateful night. So come on up to stage. Okay, with us tonight, we have Benny, uh, Benny Martinez, yes sir, and Tina, Tina is here with us tonight, uh, Ernest Eguia, yes, uh, Jim Montero, and Mike Herrera. So Benny, we start with you. What, uh, what do you remember from that night? I remember something that happened that attracted my attention. I was sitting in a place where I had... Please, 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 por favor. I was sitting in a place where I had a good view of the president. My wife, my beautiful wife was with me. And I noticed when the flamenco dancers went to dance, you know, their heels are about that big. And when they started dancing, the president was looking at the LBJ. So when they jumped up and stepped on the floor, they stomped on the floor real loud. And I noticed what the president went like that. As if he had a premonition. That, I, I noticed that, and, and I said, oh my God. I told Helen, he must have a premonition that something's going to happen to him. I remember that, very clear. I remember that. And the next day, 15 hours later, you hear that he's been shot. Absolutely, it, 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 you know, it's ironic that one day we were jumping with joy. Con mucha alegría, con mucho gusto. Jumping with joy. And the next day, some of us were crying. And I remember that. How did he feel, the president, to be in this crowd of uh, so many Latinos? During that night, absolutely wonderful. It was unprecedented because for the first time, very first time, we had a president address us. Not only the president. <laughs> but the vice president and the first lady. And there were many other congresspeople 
very important people. The governor was there. Many other people were there. And so it was, it was just fantastic. I felt a lot of pride, a lot of pride in, in being not only a LULAC member, but a Mexican American. Jim, Jim, Jim. Jim Montero, what do you remember that night? Uh, that night I was assigned to be uh, the officer to protect the president with my partner, Richard Galeno. You were a police officer? Yes, sir. I was assigned to the juvenile division of the police department. And we were called in that day and told to be at the hotel and meet with the agents to protect the president's going to be there. We don't know how long it's going to be there, but to be there and receive instructions, which we did. And of course, we were told where it's going to be in the ballroom. And when the president arrived, we were, at that time, we thought he was going to just come in, say hello to the crowd, and wave him goodbye. But then we observed that his wife was with him, Jackie Kennedy, and the vice president, Linda Bain Johnson, and Lady Bird was with him. And then the governor was there also, and so was Steve Short, my chief. And so we went head on in, and of course, when the people saw them, everybody got, everybody got excited, and he landed and sort of yelling and being and all this kind of stuff. And uh, when they stepped in there, uh, Jackie said something to the president, and, uh, and they came on in. Jackie? Yeah, so she sort of mentioned something to him. We were watching, and they came went on in, so they decided they want to stay a little bit instead of just saying hello and leaving. Uh, one of the things that, uh, that we, I was told to do is to make sure that the crowd was in control, be aware of anything unusual, something out of the norm, and to take action because they didn't want anything to happen. But it was not going to happen that night. Everybody was happy. Everybody was full of love and joy for the president and Jackie Kennedy mostly. My only problem was Tina. I couldn't keep her away. She kept getting closer and closer. And, and she kept telling me, get down, get down. It's like, damn, I got to protect the president. But uh, the thing that this, uh, the president did speak, a uh, few little words, and then he called Jackie to come to the stage and say some words. And uh, I was watching the crowd and everybody- She spoke a little Spanish. She spoke, I was, she started speaking in Spanish and the crowd got real quiet. And she was speaking very clearly, very distinctly, very, you could hear her words if they were very clear Spanish. And I had to turn around and look at her. And I wasn't supposed to, but I did. <laughs> <laughs> Those big, beautiful, big, beautiful eyes and a big smile of hers. And and, uh, and for the course, I had to get back to my job of watching the crowd, but everybody was elated. And when she got through speaking, everybody started cheering. Everybody started yelling. And there were people crying. And Viva Jackie and Viva uh, Kennedy. And then the mariachi started playing. Our people that played that good song. And there was just excitement, and there, but it was just a beautiful love fest. And uh, it was, uh, but it was, I thought it was going to be longer, but it, it, it lasted 15, 20 minutes, and they were gone, you know. And then the next day happened. The next day happens, and as a police officer, did you wish you somehow had been in Dallas? And no, sir. <laughs> Uh, I was traveling to San Antonio for my day off uh, after that, and uh, I, I think I was past Gettys, Texas, when the news came over the radio that the president had been shot and killed. And I felt like somebody punched me in the stomach, and I had to get off the road, off the highway, because I had tears in my eyes. And I thought, my God, uh, there we were with the president and his wife, Linda Bates Johnson and Lady Bird. And thank God everything was good, that we had all our people were happy. It was a joyous night. And but now he was dead. He was shot and killed. And I prayed for those officers that in Dallas because they had a tough road to hold. They had to go through a hard time. And uh, I'm sure they were trying to do their best to protect the president. We all try to do our best job on that. And uh, but in the way that it was traveling open car and the road where it was pretty open. Uh, if you don't have the information to stop something like this or take an action, how do you stop it? And so it was the only thing we could do was just pray at that time and continue on. But it was something you don't forget. Uh, but it was a beautiful night, just like tonight. Everybody's happy and beautiful. 
our people. So, and I've got Tina right next to me. <laughs> Tina, <laughs> Tina Adame, what do you remember from that night? We left the house around 5.